Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm pleased to say that joining me on the program now is Jeff Hollingworth, who is Chief Marketing Officer for Rakuten Symphony. Welcome, Jeff. Good to see you again. Now, we've both been in this industry for a number of years, so I'm really interested to hear how you see the telecoms industry today. What do you think the current state of the industry is? Yeah, Guy, great to be here. I, I don't think connectivity has ever been more important than it is today, which is great for our industry. And I think we've done a tremendous job increasing the capacity of that connectivity that's being delivered, and we continue to do that. So that's all very good. Unfortunately, the financial performance of the industry is not good. At the moment, there is a challenge where the return on invested capital is, is not returning the amount more than, say, putting it in a bank. And obviously, this is not a good place for our industry to be. So I feel that given the pressures that are happening between the finance and the increasing need for supply, there is a real change happening in the industry. The industry will start to look different. We are introducing new technologies and we are starting to change how we actually run this business, which I think is the key factor to success. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. It certainly does look like a lot of telcos are realizing they need a, a tighter ship, a, a more a more optimized and efficient operation. Now, Rakuten is well known for its cloud native approach. Can you tell us how it's advancing network automation and, and why Rakuten focused so hard on automation? Yeah, I, I think it's a very important point to go back to why Rakuten took the approach it did. And I, I'm not so sure we've, we've done well in telling this story. In 2018, when Rakuten decided to take the licenses and become the fourth network operator, two things were immediately apparent to it. One is that it couldn't meet the timelines building a network the traditional way. And the second was that it couldn't afford to build the network the traditional way. Both of those led to the simple understanding that the only way to achieve success is by doing massive automation. So the number one first-class citizen of everything Rakuten did was really automation. Now, what that means by inference is to automate, everything has to be programmable. That's why the decision was taken that everything should be cloud native, because cloud native, in essence, allows accessibility and programmability of all infrastructure. And the second part was to open up the radio, and that's why Rakuten chose to aggressively pursue Open RAN before anyone thought it was possible. And the reason, again, was because then it allows Rakuten to automate in one way across all radio supply chain. And today we sit there with nine different radio suppliers, but all of them are operated the one way. And this leads to massive speed, massive efficiency, and we can see the results coming from that, that approach. Well, as you said, Jeff, this was for a new network build-out, but what is required to be successful with automation if you already have an existing operation? Yeah, so now we're engaging with the same approach across many operators in, in all regions of the world. And, and what we are seeing as the blueprint for success is that the operators that, that we work the best with understand that you cannot carry on doing the same thing the same way. So that means that we have worked at setting up new teams and new organizations that are automation first. I think that that's a key learning that uh, we see. And it makes sense if, if you automate, but you're still doing nine to 10 to 12 different handovers along a legacy organization and process, you are not going to see any change or, or any difference. So step one is to embrace the fact that automating needs its own organization and its own focus. And when you start to work that way, you start to discover 
that there are many processes that you can iteratively address and start to put into an automation pipeline. So organization is key. Having that mentality and that skill set is key. We, we're not seeing the need for large teams to do this, the exact opposite. What we see is that we start very small and we choose low-hanging fruit and then we automate and then we build on those automations and we build on those automations. That's really interesting, Jeff. Um, now, closely linked with automation is AI, and the AI sector is evolving at a phenomenal rate. Every day we're learning something new. Going forwards, what do you see is the role of AI in telecoms? Well, obviously, the world is buzzing with AI, and there's a lot of uh, hope, and, and there's going to be a lot of change around what AI affects in, in all industries. Telecom is, is no different. The fundamental understanding, though, that we have to get to is that AI is as good as the data flow that feeds it. And for ourselves in telecom, an essential part of preparing, I would say, for an, an AI-driven future and an autonomous network future is actually making sure that we have that common data model and that common data understanding. So when, when we are working with existing operators, we always start in one priority area, I would say. So either we start by introducing a, a nucleus of, of open RAN activity, and we automate the open RAN activity inside the existing operation, meaning that we ingest the data from the existing operation into what we're doing. We run according to the full automation provided by being fully accessible and programmable from a network point of view. And then we push the resulting data back out into that traditional operation so it can be reported on dashboards. And so we can still maintain one cohesive operation. And we start to call that greenfield and brownfield. That's our little bit of our working name for this. We do it from a site management point of view, or another starting point very commonly is cloud native service assurance. But what we start to see is that when you have everything in that common data understanding, then you can start to move from a rules-based automation approach into actually an AI analytics machine learning model. So you can start to, to pick out further learnings that are not obvious that are then machine driven and then can start to be candidates for for closed loop operations now we we had one example with a uh, with an operator that's a great example of the power of automation where that there was a a comment that uh, a site went down and it came back so quickly people weren't even sure that it had gone down there was a, a two or three second blip in the in the uh, throughput of that cell, but quite literally, that that would have been a full ticket manual process outage. With automation, those things should never hit a dashboard; they should disappear. Yeah, there's so much potential here. It's great. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about your experiences with Rakuten Mobile. How do existing operators start to achieve the kind of outcomes that you've seen in Rakuten? Yeah, it's, I think it's all choosing the starting point and and being that is it open run is it just about how to uh do site management build processes is it about how to do uh service assurance cloud native then it's embracing the fact that it does need a new organization and it does need a new team uh and that's more from from an approach of releasing uh the the, the mindset and the framing from the existing operation. I, we always speak in telecom about introducing these new technologies, but if we introduce these new technologies in the same working model and the same working method, we get the same results because we haven't actually utilized those new technologies to empower us to do anything different. And I, I think that's where we've been for 10 years inside this industry. But now I think we're starting to see the change in mindset, lots of different engagements we're having and, and others that are powering this change. And this is why I think the industry is on the cusp of, of making 
an actual difference in how we do this industry. So given all of this, Jeff, how can telecoms grow its top line? Because as you said at the beginning of this program, telcos are under severe financial pressures at the moment. Yes. So if there was one key message I would take away from, from our session here is that the fundamental problem telecom has is its complete lack of speed. And its lack of speed has led us to be not competitive with new offers, too expensive and too inefficient. The whole focus of automation is to introduce speed and velocity, which allows you then to move quickly and also change direction very quickly. So the fundamental need for the industry is to understand that speed empowers the opportunity to compete in the open marketplace that is not going to slow down around us. Then we can choose, are we competing on connectivity solutions? So we already see some early success with fixed wireless access with private networks. We also start to see certain opportunities arise above that where you can enable different solutions from a platform and API level that sits on top of that connectivity, especially now in an AI driven world that we're preparing for, where, as I said, data flow is everything. Access to data is everything. We're in the business of ensuring quality data flow. And then in some cases, you can go even further. There's a lot of excitement around video analytics empowering coverage and sensing of populations. All of those become opportunities when you can move quickly enough and you can stop putting all of your energy, 70 to 90% on running a network and rather put 70 to 90% of your energy building those applications and the network runs itself. Very clear and important message. Thanks so much, Jeff, but we must leave it there for now. Great talking with you as always, and thanks for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you very much, Guy.